everyone and welcome back to the vlogs. So this is a very sentimental video because we're going to take a trip back through time to summer of 2019 before Corona hit and this is because next week is Gosh Summer School 2021 and I'm sad because I can't go. So because I can't go, it means you guys are going to have to go and I'm not saying this because I've been paid or because I've got any like special deal with them it's because I genuinely believe this is such an amazing opportunity that you shouldn't miss out so just convince you a little bit further and to allow me to like reminisce on my life I'm gonna read you out the blog that I wrote for that particular week and hopefully by the end of it you will click on the button to go and register and experience the best three days for your career that you could possibly ask for. Let's get started. So, Gosham School. On the Monday, I headed to Gosh for a 9.30 a.m. start. I'd really been looking forward to this for a while and I had the added bonus of a free ticket. I got a free ticket because I entered into a Twitter competition online. So basically, all the luck that I've had with Gosh is jammed to luck and social media which is why I always say social media is not a bad thing. So I managed to get there and of course, they, you went to the building and you have the awkward first moment of finding people to talk to. I ended up chatting with a soon to be doctor from Vienna. This event is international. People would actually come afar from this event with people coming from Ireland and even New Zealand. We had our first talk on general paediatrics delivered by Professor Caroline Thurtleman. She arrived with her pink hair and talked us through her day-to-day -day job as a paediatric consultant. I was in awe and just her passion for the children she had seen and her interactions with the family were lovely to hear and you could tell she loved her job. This was actually a really common theme throughout the rest of the summer school and it was clear that these doctors would not rather be doing anything else and that is definitely something I want for my future job. Listening to Professor Fertelman talk, I could see me and her and her quirky ways and just being this absolute, you could tell she's the, like the firecracker consultant on the ward. So on one of her junior's first days, um, they were wheeling the, the trolley down to the end of the ward. And as a bit of a joke, she shouted down the corridor, they're stealing the notes. And of course this poor Julia had a heart attack and everyone knew it was a joke, but, um, and I was just like, yes, I, I can definitely see myself in you. So I, I hope to become a doctor like her eventually. So we then had a quick break and we then had a talk on training, training pathways in paediatrics. And for me, it wasn't hugely relevant at the time because I wanted to go down a surgical route, but now I'm a bit more open to what I do. I don't know exactly where I want to be and what I want to end up doing. I know I like paediatrics, I know I like brains, and I know I like acute medicine and having that broad range of things to deal with. So talking through the training pathways has actually given me a bit of a broad depth of knowledge about where I'm going and what I need for my future career, even though I don't quite know where I'm heading yet. I just know that if I do want to go down the surgical specialty route or any of the more specialised areas, I will have to pick up as much paediatric experience as I can to just mould my way through life. After that, we then had a talk from a general paediatric surgeon, Mr. Simon Blackburn, who is lovely. So he talked about the surgeries that he had carried out, where he'd undergone his training, how he'd done his training. He also has undertaken a master's degree in surgical education, which is something I didn't know was on offer. And since then, I've been opened up to this whole world of med ed, and I love it. I want to lecture someday. I plan on standing in front of a lecture hall and making people like neuroscience. I feel like that should be my tagline, really. I do want to gain a master's degree someday and perhaps a PhD. I know research, well, writing research isn't my strength. Doing research, I love. I just wish I could give all my data to someone and they write it up really pretty. This was the first time out of many for the three days were actually my mind broke from paediatric neurosurgery and started wandering around looking at different specialties which is actually probably the best thing that gosh summer school did for me i was really captured by these surgeries and just the the delicate structures used and the technique and it was just incredible to me to watch the interruptive footage and yeah i was fangirling i really was <laughs> In the afternoon, we had breakout sessions and we had been randomly assigned to groups. So I was put in the design and research study one. And I was judging it slightly, but the group I put in were, worked really well together. And I actually made some uh, lovely acquaintances during this week. Our facilitator was Professor Paul uh, Winyard. Remember that name? And he took us through design the study, things you need to consider, things we haven't even thought about. 
we had to present these and they were part of the competition and my group ended up winning so we won these textbooks which are the uh gosh handbook pediatric Handbook of Pediatrics, I can't read backwards. Um, and although I haven't had much of a chance to use mine yet because I haven't done my pediatric rotation, I'm pretty sure, hopefully, in my foundation years and at the end of this year when I have my pediatric rotation, this will come in very handy. <laughs> so lastly, we had a Q&A session with the Gosh Young People's Forum or the Gosh YPF. And this was an organisation organization set up where patients with Gosh and their siblings could basically had their own little committee and they got to have an input into how the hospital was run. So they have representatives on interview boards to decide things like the next chief executive of Great Ormond Street, you know, little things like that. Um, and they also get to have input into any building work and any redesigns awards that go on. It was actually nice to be able to talk to them and to find out what they thought was a really good quality of a doctor. And it's not just with patients that we got to chat with but siblings of patients as well which is really important especially at paediatric level where you'll quite often have a young child with a sibling of roughly similar age and it's important that you include them as well one thing that did stick with me is that one of the members of the ypf said being trained in how to deliver care appropriately to their sibling was really important to them and it wasn't until they got to gosh and brought it up that she actually got that training and that just made her feel so much more included. That's something I will take forward and I hope to keep in my practice is that especially paediatrics you're not just treating the patient and you're not just treating the problem but you're treating this family unit and so as far as you're concerned every single one of that family is your patient. Might be a bit dramatic but you get my point. So that came to the end of day one. So on Tuesday, I was late uh, because the trains were delayed as someone had stolen the signal cables further up the line. Uh, but I did try and run through London and try to get a gosh as soon as I could. I arrived during the talk, so I missed half of it, but I got there in time to hear the important bit. And this particular line has changed my outlook on my entire career and myself. So Dr. Sharma was given a talk on his career pathway and how he felt he wasn't the correct personality type to pursue the career he did until he found paediatrics. He said that you shouldn't ever change yourself to suit the job you're going for. Instead, be bold and be the person to be different. This is the one thing I did take away from that week and it's something that will stay with me forever. At this particular point, I really did want to pursue neurosurgery and I knew that I wasn't the normal personality type that goes down there. I'm a bit of a firecracker, I'm quirky, I'm excitable, I'm loud, I'm not really competitive and I just didn't feel that it suited me but him saying that, even though it's not really a career path I want to follow through anymore, kind of made me find confidence in myself again. So I know that one day I will end up here. This, I will work at this hospital one day and I'm not gonna change myself because this is why I fit in. <laughs> Emotional part over. At the end of all this, I was really feeling really humbled and inspired and it turns out that Dr. Sharma was actually the medical director at Great Ormond Street at that particular time. Fangirling. Uh, so after Dr. Sharma, we had a talk from Professor Paolo De Coppi and I probably said that wrong, I'm really sorry. Uh, and it was about regenerative medicine in children. And he was actually part of the team that performed the first stem cell trachea transplant. Basically what they did is they harvested a donor trachea, they stripped it of all the cells by the collagen and got stem cells from the patient. Basically popped the stem cells onto the scaffolding and put the trachea back into the patient. The patient is still doing amazing to this day and doesn't have to take anti-rejection meds. And th this is... This is something else I love about Gosh because this is just groundbreaking and they're pushing the boundaries and changing lives the better and changing children's lives the better. I will stop fangirling at some point. We then had lectures about how to strengthen our CVs and this was useful for the level that I was at because I was still only between the first and the second year medical student at that particular time so I had time to sort my CV out and it kind of gave me a little bit of direction of where I needed to put most effort into and put my efforts into um, going through my degree. One common theme that did keep occurring was taking an F3 year. This would be a break between becoming a fully qualified doctor and starting specialty training. There was also an added emphasis on taking a break away from training to pursue upper opportunities such as going over a to different countries to experience their healthcare system and training under different consultants and this is something that I do want to do. 
I do want to see Australia. I do want to see New Zealand. So in the afternoon, we did have careers fair and you will be having this at, gosh, summer school 2021, albeit virtual. Uh, this was incredibly useful as I got to chat to some of the specialties that caught my eye. One of these was PICU and CATS, uh, which is the paediatric, in paediatric intensive care, if I can say my words and the Children's Acute Transport Service. ICU wasn't anything that I'd originally thought about, but it had become a surgery that had got me rethinking my career pathway. Uh, Dr. Andrew Jones was one in the stall that day, and it was interesting to hear about what he does day to day, and he informed us about the CAT service, so this is a transport service, which is designed to take critically ill children to picky units uh, other hospitals where, where they're currently in hospital without one. It's a specialised ambulance that can, that can cater for critically ill children during transfers from one hospital to another, meaning children can receive the best possible care every stage of their journey. Uh, Dr Jones happened to be on a 48 hour call during the fair, so he was multitasking, so he had his phone out and was like eagerly watching it. I also managed to talk to Dr but he, oh god, I'm gonna meet him soon, and I've probably said that wrong, um, about neurology and how best to get involved in research to show education to the field, because neurology is probably the area I will end up in. I also managed to sit down with uh, Professor Paul Winyard about getting involved in research and what clinicians expect to students at clinical level, because I was just about to enter into that stage. I was worried with the data manipulation side of research, I still am, and uh, this is something I just never really stood in my undergraduate. Sorry, Paul. I think he sensed that I had no self-confidence. I still have no self-confidence. Um, basically told me to just get out there and go for it. I must admit, sitting in lecture hall knowing I was probably only the only one who didn't get straight A's or A-stars for the A-levels. So we were, we were in a room which was a lecture hall for the majority of the conference. And I was very aware that I was probably not the brightest person in that room and it was easy to feel like the underdog so this little boost I got from Professor uh, Winyard was what I needed really. We then had a Q&A session with specialties and I believe the most memorable question was is it as bad as Adam Case says it is and this was around about the time his book was coming out and it earned a laugh throughout the audience and we were told about how paediatrics was tough and some days were long but it's the smiles on the kids and the relief of the parents faces that get you through it. We then had a presentation by Gosh Arts and ended up being more of a group singing session. This is great, I forgot about this. Uh, we all stood up singing through this tune and, and for a bunch of people who have seen more of the inside of the hospital than the outside for the past couple of years. The harmonies were really good <laughs> and despite feeling a little bit embarrassed, it was a really enjoyable session and really hit the home the power of a non-medical treatment. One, two, three, four, five, five. One, two, three, four, five, five. This was one of my favourite parts of the week. In the evening we had a small drinks party on the on the roof of Gosh with views all around London. It's nice just to talk to everyone from different medical schools, exchanging OSCE horror stories and stories in the wards. I was chatting to final year students about their electives and also found out about working in Glastonbury as a medic. I also ended up bumping into the guy who runs the media side of PGME Gosh and we were chatting about how despite thousands of emails that got sent out, only 44 people actually signed up for Great Ormond Street Summer School. I was chatting about how that kind of needs to change and what we can do and how to best approach it. I said about student ambassadors at each school to push gosh events. And I actually ended up leaving that day at 8.45pm. We were enjoying ourselves too much. <laughs> so on Wednesday, which was the final day, I didn't want the course to end but I think we were all pretty shattered by that Wednesday. Our first lecture was about Drive Gosh, uh, which is the digital research in informa informatics virtual environment. Totally didn't have to Google that. And apart from it being the slickest presentation I've ever seen, and I've seen this presentation three times now, and every time like, I'm still in awe about the tech they're developing at Gosh is in. Incredible. One particular bit of software that caught my eye was their data collection as you could input the data you needed and it would tell you what statistical tests you need to run depending on the data you selected. So basically my worst nightmare was being done for me by the computer. They're also developing programs that were linked with therapy for respiratory patients. So to do your physiotherapy you get you play the game and only if you were doing the therapy right you can move along in the game. Amazing. Uh, we then had a talk on paediatric ethics, and I quite like ethics. Ethics is something that has grown a lot on me through this year, and I'm considering it for my SSC1 module next year. Spoiler alert, I ended up doing an English literature module. Uh, we were told about how Gosh Ethics Panel makes decisions based on ethical values and how they allow their patients in on meetings 
if the children are well enough to attend. So if the children want to be in on their discussion about their ethics behind their treatments, then they can go. Our penultimate lecture was looking at global health and how we can incorporate practicing and teaching medicine abroad. Again, it was highlighted to take time away from the conveyor belt of training and to do something in your career away from clinical practice. Our final speaker was Anthony Bennett, who was a former GOSH patient and had gone on to speak at uh, national events about his journey and has now developed his own motivational speaking business. I've watched Anthony talk three times now and every time he's talked gets me here and it's like, oh. He took us along the treatment he received as a patient of gosh. Anthony spoke about listening to the daydreamer voice inside you rather than the puller back voice. And I think we all just left this talk feeling a little bit more optimistic about the careers we had ahead of us. I did manage to chat to Anthony at the end about how he got into public speaking as it's something that I do want to do. <laughs> and that was it. So summer school's over, it was an incredible experience and I feel I've gotten so much more out of it than just how to become a paediatric doctor. I'm so grateful and I'm still so grateful to Gosh PGME for picking me as the winner of the free ticket. Gosh just seems to be that goal that I that is more realistic now than it ever was before. I can see my personality reflected in the doctors I met and doctors I still meet and it was nice to chat to them with the traditional consultant slash medical student barrier removed. And I want to try and get as much exposure in paediatrics and neurosurgery. Yeah, okay, I still want to see neurosurgery as far as much as possible. And to experience anaesthetics as this is also something that's caught my eye as a specialty. So that was the end of the blog and it really was a life-changing week for me. For some reason, gosh, kept me on. I might, I don't know, one of those like, barnacles such a side of the boat but just going to that simple conference I know one day I'm gonna end up at gosh it's something that now seems a lot more realistic to me than it did before I remember walking around London to try and kill some time back when I was in my first year of undergraduate and I was too scared to walk down the Great Ormond Street Road <laughs> um I think I could just about see the entrance on the hospital at the side of the road but I was too scared to walk down there because I just didn't think I'd end up anywhere near gosh i really really encourage you to go to this conference if this didn't sell it to you go and have a look on the website talk to the medical student ambassadors who are on social media you can normally find them so the link will be in the comment section if you are struggling to financially afford this conference please email gosh pgme and these people will be able to help you um so just Talk to the guys, the guys are lovely. I felt included from the team from day one. Somehow managed to wiggle my way into the team. Uh, thank you, Doreen, for that. Hope you guys enjoy the conference as much as I do. Gosh, summer school 2021, let's go.